Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Robert Kruger, and he has this question. Um, he's minus one antenna that he wants to build. I want to build an 80 meter dipole and support one end off my Yagi Tower at 45 feet. And so he's going to build a sloper, okay? For as long as I've been in ham radio, I have only worked digital from my keyboard or PSK or Olivia and others due to his hearing, having trouble with his hearing. I have no need for a multi-band 80 meter antenna dipole because I have two other step by R antennas that cover 40 through 6 meters. Step by R antennas are premium antennas. As it turns out, I have one. I did a lot of cost sharing with them. They paid for most of it. Um, I've got the step by R big IR, which is a vertical that covers 80 through 10, uh, simply by putting a spare, it's kind of a weird um, uh, step relay kind of uh, transformer box at the bottom of it. It's a really nice antenna, and I use that as my reference antenna to measure everything against. It's got quite a few radials. Okay, so he wants to dock on 80 for one single purpose. He wants the digital stuff, which is way at the bottom of the band, around 8, uh, let's see, 3, 5, um, 6, 5 to 3, 5, 9, the very narrow portion of the band. Now, one of the things, if one of his antennas is a big IR, uh, you can get an adapter for it that will uh, make it work on anywhere on 80. Uh, it takes a tiny bit of setup, but uh, it will uh, work that way. Okay. So uh, he says, I want to build a short 80 meter dipole that covers up to 3560. And it must be an NFED antenna due to the woods in our backyard. So he's going to feed it on the end that's closest to the house. I've read the antenna books from the ARRL and I still can't figure out what I need except some kind of an un, -un and a trap. But I don't know how to figure this out. I was told to use a 64 to 1 or 49 to 1 un, -un along with a 25 foot long counterpoise. And the un, -un has a tap for the counterpoise on it. It does. Could you help me please? Okay, we'll see what we can do. Now before we uh, jump into Robert's dilemma here, I want to thank Bill Harrison, who is a very recent patron on patreon.com. If you would like to become a patron, go to the link at the bottom of this page. Okay, let's take a look at the whiteboard. Okay, here's his shack. And he's going to run a, his cable out to his ground rod where the lightning arrestor is. And then probably up to the 49 to 1. That's really all you need. You can get put the 64 to 1 in there if you want. But there's then going to be a wire uh, that's going to go up to the tower. Okay, now he didn't talk about using this as an inverted V. He made reference to being hard to get into the woods. So he's probably in a, uh, like a uh, wooded area. Okay, and I can understand that. So the f this antenna length is fixed. Now, if you want an antenna for 3560, that's 3.560 divided by... 468, no, frequency in megahertz, divided by 468. Oh, I've got that upside down, don't I? 468, because we're dealing with wire, over 3.56. Let's just get the calculator out and see how long that is. So we've got 468 divided by 3.56. 
and that antenna should be 131 feet long. 131 feet. Now, the, the thing is about this, that's a long antenna. Now, if you've got room for that antenna, or your tower is even further away, just put a piece of rope there uh, to, to hold that up. Okay, use the 49 to 1 ballon. Your coax, since it's grounded down here at the lightning arrestor, can probably act as the counterpoise. Or if you want, you can lay a counterpoise down here. Note that moving the counterpoise around will change its impedance. So whatever you put down, leave it. In my case, where I used a fairly long cable to the beginning of my antenna, uh, when I did the testing on it, the coax between there and the ground acted as the uh, counterpoise. Now, what do you do if you can't get 131 feet? Well, you have to shorten the antenna. Now, how do you get that to tune? Well, what you will have to do is insert in the middle some inductance. How much inductance? Cut and try inductance. Now, this is not a trap. The trap has capacitance too. This is a loading coil. Okay. And it's not going to take much. Take a, a one inch piece of PVC and take some household wire or magnet wire or whatever's handy. Run it around this thing several times. Put it in there. Put this on a pulley. With rope down to the ground uh, with, um, you know, a big loop in the thing here. So you can pull it down to the ground where it's slack, change the coil, and roll it back up and check. Okay? And you'll add or remove turns from this coil. Now, what will this do to your antenna? With the 49 to 1, 130 foot 1 antenna, uh, without this in the middle, you've got a very nice antenna that will work on 80 40, 20, uh, probably 17, 15, 12, and 10, okay? It'll work on all those bands. When you put the loading in the middle, you're going to find that a lot of those bands go away. And this becomes a specific antenna for 80 meters. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Now, remember, an end-fed antenna is fed at the end, right there, okay? This is still a dipole. Whether it's end fed, off center fed, whatever fed, it's still a dipole. Now, the loading coil will make it shorter in the easiest way is to try a few, several turns, like 10 turns on the PVC, check it, see where it resonates. This is one of the nice things I like about the MFJ tuner. The MFJ tuner does not come up on one band or another. See, right here you can go anywhere between 1.8 and 4. And so you can tune across that and it will tell you right there what you're tuning to until you find the dip. Okay, and it may be higher. So you can go 4 to 10, find the dip. If it resonates on a higher frequency, it's too short, so you have to take some turns off there. Okay. So that's the way that you would go about putting this antenna up. So again, get somebody to climb the tower, or if you're going to climb the tower, get a safety observer, just a piece of rope. I would suggest that this piece of rope up here be at least three feet long uh, feet. Otherwise, the antenna and the tower start to become part of each other, which may or may not be a good thing, you may not mind. Um, but you can do that, okay? So there's your uh, answer on what you're trying to do. Uh, so you're not using a trap, using a loading coil. 
and you're using an Unun, which is a 49 to 1, or a 64 to 1 will do, you can buy these, you can make these. Um, and the counterpoise length, if you attach this to the ground very short, you may have to add an extra counterpoise. And again, that's something to play with on the, uh, on the length because there's no hard and cut formula for your house and your location, your ground, and so on. So can you do this? Yes, absolutely you can do it. If you put a pulley up here with rope on it, uh, you can pull this up and back, make your adjustments, pull it up and down, so you're only climbing the tower once. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, go to the URL at the bottom of the video. And until we next meet, 73.